Fred, welcome to the call. We're so excited to have you. Yeah, well, it's good to be here. And a few people with an epiphany that what they're doing with their current job isn't working. And if you think about it, when you think about when it comes time to retirement, right? Okay, Jeff, you, you're the exception because not only do you have your job, you have other jobs and you employ people. But would you agree or wouldn't you agree? Most people have this perception that they do what their mama tells them, which is you go to school, you get a great education, you go find a good company, you work really hard, and you're just kind of going to have a nice, comfortable life. And at the end, when you turn 65, you'll retire, you make your money, and life's good. Wouldn't you agree? I think I, I totally agree. In fact, I went to law school and I had to pay off my law school loans with RX, RX commission. So <laughs> I think that that's typically the way it goes. Yeah, and you've got friends now that are lawyers that now got a job. They're working somewhere. They're working for somebody. And I'm telling you, you we all think doctors and lawyers. Oh, well, that's who or what you want to be when you grow up. You'll make a lot of money. You'll be nice and taken care of your whole life. Your whole retirement's good, right? Well, tonight, what I want to do is take the opportunity to walk people through finance. So everybody tonight is going to get a free class in Finance 101, and I hope that when you're done, if I did a nice job, I'll scare you into believing that maybe what your mama told you isn't an exactly successful route for retirement at all. And when we got to do this um, all around in Europe, I think there were a lot of people when they got done, I know everyone that was doing it kind of said, wow, I didn't, yeah, I didn't realize just how poorly the outlook looks like for anybody who's got a job. So tonight, I took the liberty of building a spreadsheet, and it was funny when we were there, uh, Jeff looked at it and said, that has got to be the ugliest spreadsheet I've ever seen. It's not pretty. It's not graphically appealing. So Jeff took the liberty, and he made it all gussy up. So what you're going to see on the screen was a product of what happens when you have a finance guy working with a marketing person to put together in an Excel spreadsheet what is going to be calculating as net present values, future values, interest rates, etc., to determine how financially successful you're going to be when you die. And I'm going to tell you something. It is going to be so astounding to you when it's over that I think you're all going to have a greater appreciation for old people. Because old people, hey, okay, Jeff, tell me, how does your old grandma or your grandpa treat you and the prices of things, even today, let alone when you were a little kid? They all go through it, and they all freak out about how much everything costs. Okay, my boy has this crazy hair. I mean, it was crazy. It was so big and humongous. And he just said, oh, dad, you're just a, he's just, you're just a hater. And you don't know what good hair is. And I look fashionable. I offered him a hundred bucks to cut it. And I couldn't, Jeff, I couldn't get him to take it. I started to say things just like my grandparents used to say. It was just, do you know how much a hundred bucks is? Do you know what I would have used to do? I used to have to mow lawns for five bucks and it would take me an hour to mow them in the hot sun and you won't even cut your hair for five, for a hundred bucks. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I'm getting old because I'm starting to realize just how much prices go up compared to when I was a little kid and I don't feel that old. So today I want to take an opportunity to go through this with someone here in the, on your conference call. So I'm going to need a volunteer. And I'm going to walk you through what I'm looking for. And if you're available, you can send something to Jeff and we can sort through who's going to be a good person to do it. Now, we're going to first of all be talking about your personal financial situation. It's got to be someone who kind of feels like, hey, I'm a typical American. I'm doing what I should be doing. I'm doing it about what I'm doing. I've got next requirement. 
a full-time job. So Rx isn't your only business. You have something else that you go to every day, nine to five. I really don't care your age, but I wouldn't go too old. If you get too old, the chances of you having it at retirement by now, you're probably done for unless you do something different. So let's keep you under the age of 40. That'd be nice. Um, and you're also putting away maybe a little bit towards retirement that you have. And you would say in the end, I'm kind of the average American. Okay. Well, you got a, a bunch of people, a bunch of people that are now saying, uh, "Count me out, count me out." But you got a bunch <laughs> of people that are on there as well. So I think you've scared them appropriately. And uh, so we're gonna we're gonna wait now for one second as I stall just a little bit, and I'll just make sure you're in a quiet place so you can answer the questions you're gonna interact with Fred. Um, but we've got a very brave a guy that I know. His name is Thomas. He's 46. And uh, he, he continues to type in that he's going to do this. And we've got Thomas on the phone. Are you there, Thomas? Yes, sir, I am. So here we go now, sir. This is all going to rely on you. We're going to see how well your future looks. Now, did your mama tell you go out and get a good job and get a good education? Yes. So what did you do? I didn't. You did not get an education. Well, I went to college, but I didn't graduate. Okay, so number one, you made a strike on that. And by the way, I am an advocate of schooling. I do it myself. So I'm a big advocate of schooling. But the irony in that is while you did start out without an education, you probably handicapped yourself in a job by about 25%, just so you know. That's about what it's worth if you would have gotten a degree, and it goes up just a little bit if you would have gotten a master's and a PhD, but that's okay. Well, so, okay, I, so tell us. Well, oh, actually, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. Actually, I've been in sales my entire life. I've never had a salary or an hourly job uh, after I was 23. I've been 100% commissioned since then, and I'm 46. Holy cow. Okay. That's got to be gutsy because you're only as good as your last sale. Is that right? Right. That's right. And that's why I got to do something different because I don't want to die of a heart attack at 50. Oh, gotcha. What kind of, I'm just curious, what kind of things do you sell? Well, I sell money right now. For the past 23 years, I've sold money. I'm a mortgage banker. Oh, ah, okay. 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 So, how much do you make every time you make a sale on a mortgage? Uh, that really depends on the size. Usually it's about 2% of the loan amount. Oh, so that's decent, right? That's uh, mega cash, yes. Yeah, so tell me, how much is the typical loan you make and how much is the typical amount you get? So typical loan is about anywhere from in Austin right now, 2005 to about 350 So it ranges anywhere from five to seven grand. Per loan, and you do about five or six loans a month. So you make some serious coin. Yeah, whenever it's good. Um, I mean, that was that was not in my prime. That was like in the probably in the past two years. Uh, it's gone down a lot because the government's taken a lot more control over the lending industry. Uh, however, you know, I've been as much as three, four, five hundred thousand a year back in the day before two thousand eight. And then all of that went away. Oof. Okay. What a heartbreak. <laughs> so, so you're. Oh, go ahead. It was a big heartbreak. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out a few stats today, and we're going to tell you where you rank in America and how well you're doing, which, trust me, by your numbers, when I said I'm looking for someone who's typical or average, uh, you're sort of slightly. Uh, quite a bit ahead. I don't okay? Think, I will surprise you. <laughs> okay. Well, here we go then. I'm going to ask you, we're going to start out with my little spreadsheet that I always say inflation sucks because people don't appreciate how much things cost or how much they will go up in a long period of time. In fact, um, 
one of the biggest, strongest, most expensive things there is is compounding interest. And you of all people would know it because people get a mortgage, right? They buy it. They buy a house for three hundred thousand dollars there in Texas, and they don't realize that they're going to end up paying seven, eight hundred thousand by the end of the loan term, right? Correct. And it's an amortized rate, which means the net present value of one payment. It. I better say it simple. Nothing's going towards principal to any significance until towards the end of the loan. So, in other words, you're paying all principal or all interest. No principal, and then the average person moves in three to five years. Hence, they owe about what they owe on the house, assuming it didn't go up or down. Am I right? That is correct. The average life loan in Texas right now is 3.7 years. What? Cha -ching. See, I'm just this plethora of knowledge. People just thought I just do Rx for a living, but I should have been a financial planner. <laughs> I'm telling you. Okay, so let's go through. As you can see on my spreadsheet, up on the screen first with inflation stocks, I have the cost of whatever today. So what I want you to do is I want you to think back a day or two ago, something that you buy every day. Now, it could be something expensive. It could be relatively cheap. But say you go for a latte uh, at Starbucks or you always stop and get something that you'd say, hey, this is a regular thing that I purchase. Tell me something you like that you buy all the time. How about a? I get a cup of coffee every morning for three dollars and twenty-five cents at Starbucks. <laughs> okay, three dollars twenty-five cents Starbucks coffee. I love it. Now we're going to try to predict. Cup of coffee is going to cost you when you are about to die. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, let's go through. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. And you give me your answers, all right? Yes. So the first question will be, how old do you plan on being when you die? Uh, I would say probably somewhere around the late 70s, early 80s, probably, with my life cycles and my family. Holy cow. Okay. Well, first of all, you better start talking to Deanna because she can help you. She can help you live a lot better. And a lot longer, but your number is actually very accurate. The average guy lives to be about 78 to 79 years old, and the average female lives four years longer than that. Because I don't know why. I won't go there. I'll offend half the audience, so we'll just leave it at that. So we're going to put in, you're going to be dead at 79. Is that right? I would say yes. Okay, so you've got a good 30 years left in you before you're done. So now let's move to the next questions, okay? Yes, sir. Guess what the average inflation rate has been over the last 25 to 30 years here in America? Now, remember, yes. inflation, right, is how much goods or services go up over time. Right. I'm going to guesstimate about two and a half percent. Okay. And you know what's funny? Um, okay, so you're almost my age. You got me by a little. But um, do you remember times in the Carter era, in the late 80s, et cetera, or the early 80s, with how much interest rates have, have been? Yes, they were in the 13 to 18 percent range. Co Yep, that's right. That's right. And so when you kind of go through it, you're like, holy cow, I didn't realize how much things can go up. And then other years, you will have it as low as two and three years, two and three percent, right? That's correct. So you've got to pick the time you use and the other, and you picked what number? I thought it would go up about 2.5 percent inflation rate. I'm not sure, though. I'm not an economist. I just know numbers. <laughs> Got you. Well, depending on what you use and how you use and the real economic interest, you're not a bad guess. But it's about 3.4 from some of the numbers, depending on which items you look at as an increase. Now, you're in the food industry, which puts the inflation rate higher than it does in other, in other areas. So you're actually looking 
if we do food, at about 3.8. Okay? okay? Not too bad. So okay. good. Not a bad bat. Not a bad guess. So we're you're doing good. Okay. We're ready for the next one. Yep. I want you to tell me how much do you get if you put your money in a savings account? Oh, uh, somewhere between 1.2 and 1.4 percent. Yeah, okay, that depends on if you're willing to put it in for a longer period of time. Yeah, but you know what? What that? I'll give it to you on a CD, and I'll even give you the rate you want. It's a little less, but how about we go with 1.4? Okay. Now, this applies, the same situation applies. Sometimes interest rates go up a little bit higher, 2.5%, and sometimes they go down even less than that. So you have to kind of pick your poison based on where LIBOR is. So I've been fairly generous at a 1.4% interest rate average, okay? Okay. And finally, what is our tax rate here in America? Now, I'm not here to tell you it's all bad or all good or we're all going to pot. Notwithstanding, our income taxes do not stand a very good chance of going down over the next 30 years. Right. So, what are those levels right now? And I'm going to assume they hold flat for the next 30 years, which is not likely. Well, isn't different income in different tax brackets? Sure. We're on a regressive tax basis, so we start out with the lowest and we move up to the upper. So based on what the average American makes, which I happen to know, take I, a guess of where their tax rate is. It's about 17 to 19%. Oh, you're way low. 35%? <laughs> it is from 28 to 32%. Plus, I'm not counting home tax, which in Texas you don't have, so that's nice on property, but you'll pay it everywhere else, right? Uh, or, or rather, no sales tax. So pick your state tax or what you have. The real effective tax rate in America, notwithstanding the goods and services you purchase, I'll give you the best rate on the planet at 30%. If wow. you make, If you make a lot lower... Um, yes, you can get it down to around 20, and of course, in poverty levels, you can get tax credits. But do you know if you get into the upper tax credit above 250, your real effective tax rate now is 50%. God, that's as much as gambling winnings. Yeah, with all the new taxes and with the disallowance of deductions upon certain levels, it gets ridiculous at how high our tax rate is. By the time I add my state and my federal, because I have another 6% that I have to pay on my state. Ooh. So it's nasty. Okay, now your personal questions that are going to suck, but here we go. So my first question, okay, so we've got your age, right? 46? Yes, sir. So he's 46 year old. And my next question is, how old do you want to be when you want to quit working? When you Se want to say, I'm done. 79. You want to stop working on the day you die? I hope so, because I love work. <laughs> okay. Then I need a number that you would think the average American will want to stop at. Because most Six people don't want to work till they're dead. They want to do what they love to do at retirement. 65. 65 is a great number. Most people now think they have to do the 67, but I'll take 65 because you're right. That is the average time when people say, doesn't mean you can't keep doing what you love. You just won't be working a full-time reportive job at 65. Fair enough? Fair enough. Currently in savings, if I walked up to you and said, I want you to have readily available cash, so that would either be in a bank or a safe or under your mattress, how much do you have in your savings? Two hundred and forty nine dollars. <laughs> Two hundred and forty nine bucks. Okay, so if you put it in there. Oh, you know what's crazy? Did you know less than two percent of Americans could get their hands on more than ten thousand dollars in two days? You want it even worse? The average American can't get much more than fifteen hundred dollars. And the That's average crazy. Also lives from paycheck to paycheck, regardless of the amount they make. Oh, 
And if you're between the age of 40, 29 and 44, you are spending on average 10% more than you make. That's right. You know, Fred, for a guy, he seems to be telling you the truth. No wonder yeah, he has to work like shocking. 79. <laughs> so well, he's definitely, you know, that's why, uh, that's why when, when uh, a friend of mine, Ken Smith, and, and, and uh, John were, were talking to me, it just all made sense, just all of a sudden. I never yeah. thought about creating residual income. So that was the problem. Yeah, that's correct. Paycheck to paycheck. It's true. And then you always end up spending a little more, and then the interest you play on those credit cards, you just get buried. That's right. Right? So, yeah, you're no – I'm impressed. You are a completely average American. Congratulations. All right. So now you want to retire – and you would like to have a residual income in addition to whatever your social security is going to be or in addition to any ancillary income. So if you truly want to just retire and say, I'm receiving a monthly earning that I could live on. Now keep in mind, things go up. Prices of goods and services go up, right? Think about when you were a kid 30 years ago, how much things were to you. How much a month do you say, I, I would really need about this much a month or, or I'm really going to have financial problems? Okay, I've actually thought, and this is going to surprise you, uh, but I've really thought about this a lot and I've been doing uh -huh. a lot of thinking. And I'm thinking to retire, I need to be making residually without working, including Social Security and everything, about 23000 a month to be able to live okay. <laughs> you need to make 23000 a month. Based on when I'm 65, yes. Yes. Okay, so part of our problem here, Jeff, is while he is the average American, this guy's got a brain. So <laughs> as a result of that intelligence, you realize it takes a lot more in the future to live but what you're really talking about at $23,000, right? Three, it's almost 300000 Most people can't even comprehend how much that is, right? Because there's no chance they've ever made that kind of money before. So when you right. go up to somebody and say, you need to make 200 and what is 23 20, times 12? It's um, 276, right? So you need to make $276,000 a year. Oh, and by the way, that's after taxes, correct. not before taxes. That's correct. Right? Yep. So if you have to add the taxes in that, if you're looking at, oh, you've got to be, especially if you're at $300,000, you'll be in the highest tax bracket. You've got to be making 500000 to have a chance at your number. Right. Okay, now we start to get a little nervous, right? Because we realize, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, because I've there was no chance. How do you even saying this? And I know exactly what it looks like. It's ugly. Well, let's get something that was even less ugly. Let's assume you're willing to live in a. Tr the number you have is so big, it will. I think many people on the call will say, "There's no way I'll ever make twenty-three thousand dollars a month." It's just not even in my comprehension. I'm going to make you live tight at 15000 Okay. So I'm even going to lower it, which, by the way, you will find isn't enough, and see what the outcome is. And then, Jeff, I want you to go back at the end of this. You know, let's do $23,000 first, and then we'll go back and put it in at 10000 Okay, Jeff? Sounds good. So let's well, do his... Let's do his personal desire first, 23000 okay? Now, you can see the graph that shows you where you want to be, and you can see the graph of where you are. So now it's time to reveal how much that cup of coffee is now going to be costing you. Well, Fred, you. We, st we still need to make sure we got his current annual salary and how much he saved last month. Oh, crap, that's right, I forgot. Yeah, 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 thank you, thank you. And I've got it sitting right here in front of me. So that's right. 
So how much, sir, did you save last month? Zero. Okay, that's terrible. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> but at least you're not spending in the hole. So that's a plus. I'm right? Okay. okay. And my last question then that I forgot um, is what is your current annual or monthly salary? I can't remember if I put it in. And Thomas, you're probably going to have to do an average since you're a, you're a sales guy. What's your average? My yeah, average the last would be about yeah. 125,000 a year. Perfect. Over the past Perfect. three years, it's right at 125. Hey, now I'm telling you, there are a lot of people on this call. The average for the person that's making in your category, you know, the average American is only making 50 thousand a year. So when you said 125,000, I know Jeff, I don't know how many people on this call, he is well over, well over what the average American is making. Yeah, I think okay. it, very rarely do you find people that, 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 uh, that get up to those ranges for sure. Well, he's in the top 10%, really close to the top 10% of all American single earners that we have. Holy crap. Okay? Jeff, did you lose me? Yep. Nope, we're still here. We've got oh, you. Oh, got you. Okay, so now I've been talking to somebody who has an interest knowledge. I'm talking to somebody who is in the top 10% of all Americans in terms of their salary, and he's actually saving, by saving nothing, he's saving more than the average person because everybody else is going in debt. So now, the big question is, if I haven't forgotten anything, Jeff, I don't think I have, how much is that Starbucks coffee going to cost him when he is 79 years old, the day before he croaks and he walks in and says, I need me a new cup of coffee? Well, if this did the math right, it has it at $12. <laughs> Think about that. You see why your mamas and daddies, that is only, what, a few years from now. Yep. It's not like we're talking 60. You ought to see this when I'm talking to a 22-year-old girl. If I was talking to a 22-year-old and she had to go another 80 years before she had her cup of coffee, that cup of coffee will cost her 40 bucks. Right. Now, now, what I think also that people may not understand is three twenty-five to twelve dollars in, uh, let's see, in about thirty-five years may not seem that much, but trust me, that is uh, that's three hundred something percent. Yeah, triple everything that you're buying now. So if yeah. you're tripling everything you're buying now, I want you to think about your current level of everything you own and all your expenses. Think about it. You're working full time. You've got all of your bills barely covered. And when you're at uh, 30 years from now, everything will be three times the price. Right. So now you suddenly go, oh, crap. Okay. Yeah, this might be a problem. Well, let's go down to what is your current situation given the tax consequences as well, okay? Yes, sir. So, Jeff, I hope you've got those numbers down there since I can't see them in front of me. But our first one is his monthly net income after it's been adjusted for tax. $7,291.67. Okay. That's about right. Fair enough. That's got to be pretty close in your tax bracket. And your current level of savings, well, since you have nothing, right, obviously you need to start saving more because you're saving a very small percentage of what you normally should be saving in order to make it. And now the scary number. What percent of his net income in other words, how much of your monthly check that you're bringing do you need to be saving in order to hit your retirement goal 
of $23,000 every single month. Four it's only three. Percent. Yeah, only about 400%, 396%. I don't know if people understand this number. I got to explain it again. The man makes $120,000 a year. He is in the top 10% of all money earners, and he himself needs to have not 120, but 480,000, give or take some change, a year, and he has to save all of it to be able to hit his goal. That means realistically, you add 125 to that 480, and I'd be able to cover my bills and retire on my goal. Yep. Well, the good news, the good news is, Thomas, you're only 400% short per month in order to do that. So you're well on your way. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know why? I joined Eric, so now I'm going to be fine. <laughs> you know what? And that is my whole point tonight. For everybody who's sitting on the call, you listen to me. It won't work. You won't make enough money, and I am the person who defies the odds. I worked really, really hard. I got a good education. I got a great job. I went to work for a company called USANA. And guess what? I made enough that I would be the one person who at retirement would be just fine. And I'm telling you, there was one of us and maybe the 15 vice presidents, maybe, who would have made it. All 1,200 other employees that are working there, they work the same amount of hours, they work just as hard as Fred Cooper, but since I'm already occupying the top spot, they have no chance. If they continue to do what they're doing at their current employer, they have no chance to have any quality of life at retirement. And yet they still do it. And that's the funny part about it. We're out there trying to talk about RX, why you should do an RX business, why it's a wonderful thing. And you're getting all these people that say, no, you're crazy. You're in a pyramid. You should never do it. Are you, you've got to be so stupid. And then they turn around and go back to their job that mathematically gives them no chance for retirement. And the worst part about it is everyone sitting on this call, you listen to them. You listen to what those people say and you say, you're right, I'm in this pyramid. I guess I shouldn't be doing it. I need to go back and just work more. Mm -hmm. Sir, if you work four times as much, you're still not going to make it because there's not that many hours in a day. And Fred, I think the interesting part is it doesn't matter which country we're in, everybody is finding themselves in this situation and every government is running out of money to be able to help people in their retirement. Well, and who believes that it's even going to be around? It's fiscally unstable. It's impossible for it to be maintained. That's why they keep moving up the reti retirement requirements and the benefits associated with it, because it's unsustainable. And even if it is sustainable, I believe I have maxed out Social Security. If it's still available for me at 67, when I retire, I, I, I bet, I can't remember what my number was. I don't want to even quote it. But it was something like 1500 to 2000 bucks a month is what I'm skipping to receive. Give me a break. Mine was fourteen eighty nine. I've already seen the thing on it. If I retire, oh, it was how much? Fourteen sixty nine. Fourteen eighty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You know, I, I don't even want to get there on the government side of it. But I remember my mother put in on Social Security. She worked thirty five years. She had a death benefit of two hundred bucks when she died, and she got nothing out of Social Security. Totally nothing but a pissed away. Um, taxation for my mom because she died when she was 58. It's just, I, I go crazy when I hear people thinking, well, I'm doing pretty good, I'm saving, I've got a chance. And the younger you are, the more it helps you, but unfortunately, the less you make. So the percentage of your income never seems to change. It won't make a difference. And the older you're getting, the more the problem is exacerbated. It gets worse and worse on you until literally, if you don't do something else, just plan on being poor during your retirement. So, 
What if by a miracle you decided, hey, I'm not going to listen to all these schmucks who don't know what they're talking about. I'm actually going to do an alternative business like Oryx. I'm going to face the negativity. I'm going to face what I don't like to do. And that is approach people and listen to them tell me that it's not a good thing or they'll never make any money. All those negativities that cause people to quit. But what if you just did that Rx business? So I took the average earnings chart of 2016, the latest one that we have posted. All of these earnings are the result of our averages of 2015. And by the way, every year our average earnings chart goes up. So these numbers will improve over time, not fall. So I want you to go through now, Jeff. I did the calculations based on what he wanted, and it will tell you what you need to be for you, sir, to be able to obtain your objectives. Option one, get four jobs to, to meet your goal, or option two is RX. I did cheat a little bit and gave him at least saving three hundred dollars a month, and uh, oh, that way, okay. I, I had mercy upon his soul with that one. So Thomas, I love you, man, but we gave you three hundred dollars a month of savings. That's and, awesome. Uh, <laughs> so the average person saves less than a less than a team lead. The team leads are just as base as it gets within our comp plan, and if he saves. I think about. Yeah, but think about that. I have to interject. If you took your team lead and made it a solid team lead business, and you just took your team lead finish, you would already be in the top half of all savers in America. And that's what's just so amazing. Just amazing with yeah. about 100 bucks a month. Jeff, so you know, Jeff, we had that conversation. I'm so glad I'm on this webinar. So we had that conversation a little while back about um, what this young man was saying. He was saying that, you know, people go, why are you getting all involved in pyramid? And you got to go, go back to work and, and all that. There, there's a reason for that, sir, because 97% of America is afraid of the unknown and 15% of America are millionaires, but only 3% are self-made. The numbers correlate. That makes me want to be a millionaire, period. Yeah. It's true. I, I just don't get why we listen to people. We all worry about who our kids hang out with for bad peer influence, but we do the same in our financial future by hanging out with people who have no clue what their <laughs> destiny is going to look like, and they don't seem to worry about it, but they're sure if you do network marketing, you're crazy for doing it. Yes. Well, uh, Microsoft started off as a multi-level marketing. So did Dell Computer Corporation. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah. We're going we're to have to do a fact check on that one, Thomas. But uh, for now, we'll, 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 we'll <laughs> take your word on that. But, but it, it says uh, to, to be a senior director on average, it takes six months for him to match his savings, uh, which the senior director average only takes six months within our comp plan. And it says to achieve senior vice president, it typically, if he did that in the next 19 years, uh, then um, that would obviously go towards it. But within our comp plan, the average vice president takes eight months to achieve it. And by doing so both, hold it. you got to read seven. that again. You got to read that again, Jeff. You got to emphasize it. How long does the average senior vice president take based on our average earnings? Eight months. Eight months. But because, sir, we know you're clueless, we're going to give you how many years? 19. So if you can do in 19 years what the average person can do in eight months, cha-ching, you hit your objective. And that is because we gave him $300 savings instead of the zero. Yeah. Okay, next. So if he does both of them, he will double his current savings. So if he is able to do the senior director and vice president, then he's going to double his current savings. So I got news for you. Why would you continue to do something that I'm not even going to tell you quit 
your jo job. Because that will continue to pay your bills as Oryx takes time to earn money, not like a job, thank heavens, because if it was like a job, you wouldn't make your end goal. Continue to do your job, but here's the cool thing. Do Oryx one hour a day. And by the way, this isn't doing Oryx. As much as I like Jeff and I like his webinars, sitting on the phone for one hour doesn't count. Doing Oryx means you are approaching and talking and presenting the opportunity to people you know or have been introduced to. One hour a day, that's it. Give up television for one hour. When somebody says, hey, I only watched an hour of television today, I always laugh. I say, do you have any idea how much money that costs you? You think it costs you nothing. You're just sitting there. But if you would have taken that same one hour a day for five days a week, take your, take your weekends off. We're talking five hours a week for three years, four months, and several days. You will make more from your Rx business. The average person will earn more in Rx than they would earn at their full-time job. And Fred, because we've, we're about out of time, Thomas, thank you so much for being on. Thomas, um, you are great, you baby. Thank you, sir. Well, Fred, you've got a couple questions coming in from people and uh, lots of different comments. And Joe is telling you that you think your numbers are even low on how much Social Security is going to pay as a 65-year-old. <laughs> he says it's low. Uh, Wendy asks, so if the average American thinks MLM is a pyramid, then how do you recruit them if they refuse to see reason? You don't. If you get someone who refuses it, don't waste your time. You're not going to change them. And I got news for you. Tens of thousands of people join network marketing every day. They just hear about the opportunity from someone else other than you. So the person that talks to the most people wins. And if you spend all your trying time trying to convert one person to switch and change their perspective, you'll never accomplish your goal. What you have to do is talk to them. If they're reasonable and they want to listen, approach further. But once you realize they can't change their mind, guess what? Nine out of ten people won't do anything with direct selling anyway. That's the stat. That's the cold hard fact. So you know what? You can try to change one of those nine and change their perception, or you can say, you know what? I'm looking for nine no's because on the tenth person, they will say yes to me and continue to build the business. And that is what my one hour a day is all about. It really isn't about getting and finding these wonderful people. It's about statistically doing consistently talking to people, finding the people who have an interest to do it. Because those same ignorant people that say it's a pyramid are the same ignorant people that have a desk job, making $45,000 a year, have nothing in savings, are spending more money than they make, telling you you don't know what you're doing. And it's just pathetic because the sad part is you will be exactly in their boat if you listen to them.